minute, man. I've been busy because I was at WrestleMania and everything. So, man, I, I was I was gonna go, but then we had like the first day of OTA started that Monday after, so it was like I was like, ah, man, do I risk it and be late? And I was like, nah, yeah, I don't risk it. Be late. You want to go anyway, yeah, bro? I, I, I caught COVID when I came back, man. <sighs> As soon as I came back, bro, the day I was, I mean, th- thankfully it was the day I was going home. Like the, the, the yeah. day I was coming back, I started to get some symptoms. I was like, oh man, I might have, I might, I might have caught it because there was a lot of people there. But it is, you know, the experience. Though, I don't know if you've ever been to a WrestleMania, but nah, I highly recommend you got to go at least once, bro. Every I feel I, like I every got time, to, bro. Like I got it's, to. It's a crazy experience because we got down there Thursday. I went to like WrestleCon and you know met a bunch of wrestlers and everything and mm-hmm. they got all types of access and stuff and it's just like it's it's a crazy experience because like everybody's literally there like any wrestler you can think of you can walk on the street and see anybody you don't know who you can see like yeah <laughs> uh, uh, my homie stopped at a, a restaurant and then like he just saw Bret Hart and they're eating dinner you know what I mean like it's just like you see anybody like anywhere at any time like you just never know who you're gonna see that's but like. Like playing football, like that's how it is. That's how it is. Like when you play football, like you'll see like a lot of like uh Ocho Cinco, like literally at McDonald's. Like Yeah, it's it's crazy, man. Well, I'm from where I'm from, the Bengals is like the closest home team. So I've met mm-hmm. Ocho Cinco a couple of times when I was younger. Like when I was younger. Okay, so, okay. Cause he was that was like the, I mean, I'm from Kentucky, but like the closest home team is the Bengals. So like the, the people Yeah, had a yeah had a good a good run last year. Last year they did, man. I thought, man, I was hoping they was gonna win, man, because that's that's the closest uh, they've ever been in my life. Bro. I wanted, I wanted to see my boy Odell get a ring, so that was pretty cool. So he deserves it after everything he's been through and going through now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I mean, I would have rooted for the Rams. Just I wanted the people to get the to get the championship, you know, because they've been. I mean, I've been out here my whole life, so like, it's just yeah. you no know, team like that bad, bro. You struggling, bro? Like, you know, <laughs> it's a struggle. I don't even remember when the last time they had a good year, like a good season for real, other than that one. Man, well, even when they have good seasons, though, they just they disappoint. You know what I mean? So, like, people yeah. like people like really don't have, like, hope. Like, it's like one of those teams where it's like you want them to be good, but in the back of your mind, you just know they're going to disappoint you. Like, this is going to be some type of some type of something that's going to That's how it always was growing up. Like, they'll, they'll yeah. do something really good, and then, like, something will come up where it's just like, People just get disappointed again. So like, oh man, like, yeah. Growing up, I was a, I was a Panthers fan. Uh-huh. So we like, we'll always start off good, and then towards the end of the season, yeah, that happens. Yeah, that Super Bowl. You know, not every team can be good though. Some teams, you know. Yeah. Like I said, my friend, uh, my friend, shout out to Luke. He a Dolphins fan. You know what I'm saying? So like, the Dolphins have never been good his whole life. You know what I mean? So like, now they're like, they have a good team. That's why he's so excited because they got hey. a good team this year. And like, you gotta stay, stay tuned. Tell, tell them to stay tuned. We 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 going ball out this year for sure. Got to man. All right, let's see. We got a couple questions here already. Uh, this one right here. Shout out to uh, Dame for. Uh, he said, "What do you think about the Roman and Shinsuke feud for backlash? We think about that." See, it's kind of uh, so random. It's so random. Yeah. I mean, that got, it got to be a squash match between them because I mean, it's, you had Brock. Brock couldn't even beat him, so you just stay. I don't know. I just That's feel like, like uh, I just feel like uh, it's just kind of random because, like, I mean, they, nobody. I don't think anybody really believes that Shinsuke is gonna beat Roman. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I just, it's not just, even close. Yeah, he's not. He's not as over on that same level that he was, you know, a couple years ago when they could have really pushed him. But I mean, I guess I mean. This is something I guess for him to do. I mean, I don't know. It's just what they gotta do is they gotta find Shinsuke a new tag partner and feud with the Usos. So when they, when they, I, that's the thing. I don't know. I mean, looking I at the SmackDown know. roster, it's kind of limited. So like you know, yeah, putting with maybe Ricochet or something. Ooh, that'll be a good, that'll be a good team. Ricochet could be something. I mean, it could be something different because. I think, dude, they said, uh, I think it's Rick Booz, I think he said he tore his quad. So, yeah, I, I see when I was watching WrestleMania, I was like, when he went down, I knew it wasn't fake. Like, I was like, yeah, he, he yeah, because well, in the crowd, we couldn't really tell because when he did it, we didn't really know. Like, we was like, I don't know, because I, I ain't gone back and watched the match, so I didn't see it on TV, yeah. and, like, watch it. So, we didn't really know what was going on. And then the match kind of ended, so we we're like, oh, maybe he really is kind of, you know, and then they, we saw him 
when he was getting carried off. So like, oh, maybe he like really is. Yeah. Like, like, he could have really did something. So. Yeah, it looked it looked it looked bad on TV. I was like, oh, like, because I see those injuries so much that like when I like when I can when I spot it, I know if it's real or not. And I was yeah, because like, he was trying to pick them both up, right? He was trying to pick both of them like I think like a deadlift. Like he was trying to deadlift. He picked he picked he picked up one of them and one of them jumped on, and when they jumped on, that's when he collapsed. And I was like, ah. yeah, that ain't no joke, bro. The knees, man. Uh, top three in WWE. I'm talking about so we're top. Who's your top three right now in WWE? Right now, right now, uh, Roman for sure. He's not, he's number one. Yeah. Um, Randy, gotta give it to Randy. Randy, or um, one. you feeling the attack team with him and Riddle? You like that tag team or it, it grew, it grew on me. Like when they first started, I was like, I don't really like, like, I don't really like it. Like, I don't care too much for it. But then as the weeks went on and they was doing the whole gimmick and stuff, and yeah. it, it got, it got pretty entertaining. Like, I started to. Go behind it, right? What are who your third one? So the third gets, one, hey, Randy. I want to say Edge, but I feel like that's a cop out, so I'm not going to say Edge. Um, I mean, Edge is doing good stuff though, doing right now. I'm, I'm interested with the little faction they got. Yeah, my my third would have to be Finn Balor. Finn Balor, man, I would. Yeah, he's tough. I would love to see him get a push. I mean, he is the U.S. champion, but they don't really do nothing with that title anymore. Yeah. I would love to see him get a little push. I would say my three would definitely be Roman, Seth Rollins, and now Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes is back, so uh, you know, I forgot for about sure. I forgot about Cody. Yeah, he's my three for sure. Yeah. Uh, as far as I'll do a woman's side too. Sasha Banks went up one for women. Uh, I agree. Sasha Bailey, whenever she come back, Bailey always been my number two. And my number three. Oh, the rock with I'm, right, I'm rocking with Bianca, man. I'm I, I, I do like Ray Ripley. I probably put her at my four to Bianca. I'm a, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say uh Sasha, uh Bianca. I, I got I wanna see uh, Alexa Bliss come back though. She was she was yeah. one, one of my favorites. She she was back for that chamber match and then she just Yeah, I, I don't know what they did with that. That was that was weird. She wasn't uh, she wasn't even in the, she was in she wasn't in the uh, Royal Rumble, right? No, she wasn't even in the Royal Rumble. Yeah. No, no, they brought her back for the Chamber for the Saudi Arabia show, and then like she hasn't been on TV since. That was before WrestleMania too. So it's like, she, I don't yeah, know. I don't even. know. I like the like, character. Like I like her whole gimmick, like the whole character that she was playing. I just don't like how they used her. Like it was, it was. Talking about the what made, one. Yeah, what made it go down was that WrestleMania with the Fiend and Randy Orton and. That whole thing just didn't make yeah, sense. Yeah, that, so. that, that, that disappointed me because number one, I was really into that storyline. Like I was really into. Uh, that yeah, story. I was too. But then I don't like how they just broke up the Fiend and Alexa, and then they they released Bray Wyatt and everything, which was insane. Yeah, I, don't know. I, I didn't like that. Whole Vince thing. is Vince. He gonna he he gonna do those type of things. Yeah. What's your favorite title design of all time? Favorite title design. People people are gonna hate me for this one. But it's definitely the spinner belt. Yes, yeah, sir. The one behind me. The, yeah, the, I, I got one. It's just it's in my my other house in uh, Atlanta. I got both of them. I got the spinner and I got both the spinner belts. Uh, my I favorite got, is right here. I'm gonna bust it out real quick. I got that one it. in the rated R spinner belt. <sighs> my favorite all time. The big That's gold. Me. Big gold, no question. The big gold, definitely. Honestly, my, my honest opinion, I feel like they should bring that back for sure. I wish they would. Like, why do they? Why did I don't understand when they even got rid of it in the first place? Piss me if off. they bring it back, so much fans are going to come back that stop watching it. Is going to come back just because of that belt. Yeah, I don't think they really should bring it back. Uh, this is my favorite Undertaker match. What's your favorite Undertaker match? That's tough. <clears throat> my favorite one. I got two. I got two. My favorite one was uh, him versus Sean. Um, the first, the first time. That's the rest of the uh, yeah, and then him versus Jeff Hardy in that ladder match. Yeah, for the undisputed title. Mine was uh, mine would definitely be the match with Sean at WrestleMania. If I had to pick a second one, it would be the match with Triple H at WrestleMania in the Hell in a Cell, the uh, end of an era. Oh, yeah, match. yeah, that, that would go on too. Uh, who's the most underrated Mike in in ring ability? Ooh, that's a good one. <sighs> 
Most underrated on the mic. So in ring wise, I'd probably say Sheamus underrated in ring for real. I think Sheamus is a little slept on if you ask me. Uh, I I think so. But I, I had to say the Miz. He don't get the credit he deserves for real. Miz definitely don't get the credit he deserves either. Yeah. Mike work underrated on the mic though. Maybe uh let me think. Underrated on the mic. Somebody who's really underrated on the mic. Probably doesn't get enough. Honestly, I, I might say Charlotte, bro. Charlotte Flair. I think her mic skills is pretty solid, bro. I don't think people talk about her mic skills enough. Yeah, <laughs> they're right. They're right. I like I I like her whole her whole thing going on too. She's pretty. She's pretty. But solid. the Miz, the Miz for sure though. The Miz definitely underrated. He's he's he's, he's for sure underrated for sure. So bro, he was uh, he was the champion. At, he was the champion at one point. He was he was unbeatable at one point. I remember that. Everybody uh, hated so- it. Let's talk about how you got into uh, wrestling. Uh, what made you get into pro wrestling? You remember when you started watching it, or? Um. So, the first time I I watched it was uh my sister had a softball a softball tournament in um I want to say Maryland, and we're sitting in the hotel and I'm and I'm like I have nothing to do, so I just turned the TV on, I flipped through the channels, and then I just see people fighting, and I was interested. I was like, oh, what's that? And I think I think who was wrestling that might have been Eddie Guerrero. This is SmackDown. SmackDown was the first thing I saw. I think it was Eddie Guerrero. I don't remember who he was fighting, but that was like the first time I, now, how old I was sat down and was watching it. I had to be like I had to be like six, five, six. Five, six years old. Okay, okay. That's probably that's from the same time I started watching around that same age time frame. Yeah. So when you first started that's watching, who was like the first wrestler that Who's the first wrestler that caught your eye? Maybe that, like, oh man, like this guy, like this is my guy right here. So the first wrestler that caught my eye was definitely uh, Jeff Hardy. Like that was Jeff Hardy. He was the first. He was the first one. I don't know why. It's just I like the whole high flying thing at that time, and right. He just reminded me of a rock star. So I was like, yeah, like, that's pretty cool. That's why. And then that's why a lot of people like Jeff Hardy so much, you know, because he. I mean, obviously the wrist taking stuff, the high flying stuff, the yeah. general and stuff, but. The whole gimmick and he was different than everybody else you know what i mean like he was yeah he, was like, oh, he has his own style yeah his own style was a little different yeah. uh when i first started watching the one that got me into it was eddie Guerrero. he was the one that kind of gravitated yeah. towards like he was a little different you know what i'm saying the gimmick was he just come out in the low riders and i used to love low riders when i was a kid so he'd come out in the low riders and he did the whole lie cheat still thing so like yeah you know, when he would cheat matches it'd be funny you know what i mean so it was like it was like a funny way like of him doing it so he definitely was the first wrestler that really kind of gravitated me towards uh professional wrestling because i started with smackdown too i didn't start with raw i started with yeah. uh, with smackdown when it had the fist and everything when you know the, the, the yeah that that was they didn't need to bring that back too <laughs> when they had the fist on the stage i started watching and uh eddie was he really just got me gravitated towards it heavily uh but when i really started to get deep into wrestling <clears throat> you know like when I, once i started watching like consistently and like really deep and then it became John Cena easily. He was oh, see him, him too. When he was doing the whole rapping thing, when he was the the yeah. doctor of thugonomics, that's what also got me. I was like, okay, this is pretty interesting, like yeah. pretty cool. He remind me, he, he used to remind me of Eminem back then. Yeah, because his style was so different too. You know, he was, he was yeah. different. Uh, let's see, this one right here. Two questions. Okay, if RK Bro loses to the Usos at Backlash, should Randy be the next opponent for Roman? Uh, so that way, Drew versus Roman can happen at SummerSlam. What do you think about that? I feel like in order for Randy and uh, and Roman to feud, I feel like Roman will have to somehow do something for them to lose their titles, and then Randy gonna get mad and RKO real, and then that's when he gonna go on his little rampage trying to get get the get the match between them two. Because I would rather see that than Drew versus Roman, because I we already saw that match already at a survivor series right yeah they haven't feuded for the title so i mean i think at some point roman and drew probably gonna feud for the title um but a lot of people are speculating that maybe riddle is gonna be the one to turn on randy you think that's gonna happen i would like i would love to see that happen too though because it's like he's been learning behind him too so it's like now he's taking a page out of his book and did it to him so that would be cool too do you think he can make a good heel though? You think because Riddle's character isn't really like a heelish character, and right you know, I mean, he's more of like a goofy type of, you know. I feel like he'll be a good, like, like not even a heel, more of a 
you just don't know what you're going to expect from him. Like, he could be good at one time, some points, and bad at some points. So it's like, they shouldn't put a label if he's a good guy or a bad guy. It should just be up in the air. Uh, Randy, though, Randy, though, uh, for me, though, if, if if Randy is going to feud with Roman, which I would love to see, I don't think they've even, I mean, they know they had, they had the match back at SummerSlam in 2014, but they haven't really had too many matches together, you know, too many feuds. Yeah. Um, if they're going to have a few together, though, for me, it has to be like the savage Randy Orton. You know what I mean? Like, the, yeah, yep. The heelish, like, even though Roman would be the heel, he had Randy Orton has to be like on that savage level where I could at least believe maybe like a 10% chance he could beat Roman. You know what I mean? Like, it has to be believable enough for me. I need the Randy Orton that would RKO his grandmother. That's the Randy Orton I want to see. Like, yeah, you gotta have the old movie. school. The old school, he used to pump people in the head. For sure, that's the Randy. We, that's the Randy that I feel like could compete uh, with uh, <coughs> Roman. Excuse me. Do you believe Cody versus Seth uh, through what happened at SummerSlam or not? By the way, uh, Alexa got married, so she's been away. Oh, you know, she just got married. Oh, yeah, she did get married. That one. Yeah. Um, I think so. If if Seth does beat Cody at Backlash, which is very possible, the third match will probably happen. If I had to guess, maybe at Money in the Bank because that's the one after. Um. That would be the one after uh, Backlash, unless both guys are in the Money in the Bank ladder match. And then they can have the third match at SummerSlam. I, I don't even want to see a part two because I feel like Cody's going to win the Money in the Bank. So you think he, I think a lot of people feel like he's going to win Money in the Bank. But what if he's not in the Bank? If he's not, that would be very disappointing. But then, okay, then I'll be open to see him go against uh, Seth. But. If he's if he's not in the money bank, I probably wouldn't care to see the third match. Honestly, I think uh, I think he's gonna be in money in the bank more than likely. I mean, I don't see why he wouldn't. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's not, yeah. Uh, top three WrestleMania matches of all time. What's your top three? Top three. Um, hmm, that's a tough one. Like that's hard. Um. I'll say I'll start with mine, and I'll let you think about yours. So, I already, t- I already said the first two, I believe. Uh, Undertaker versus Sean WrestleMania 25. And then yeah. Undertaker, Undertaker versus Triple H WrestleMania 28. And then my third would be Stone Cold versus Bret Hart at WrestleMania 13. That would be my, my three. Mm. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to. Mm. I would say Edge. Edge versus Undertaker. Uh, Four, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that one. Honestly, at that point, I thought Edge was going to be the first one to break the streak. I really did at that point. Really? Okay. Yeah. 2000, that was 2008. Yeah, that's, what, that's when he had the Edge heads, right? Yeah, yeah. That's when he had that yeah. off and Zack Ryder. Yep. Yeah. So I, I thought they was going to interfere in the match and then and then distract the Undertaker. Edge is going to hit the you know the spear and then end it. Now it's going to be the end of the streak. But I'll say that one, uh, Undertaker versus Sean. And um, let's go over the last one. Be got options, choices. I'm have to, yeah, I'm ha- I'm have to get back to you on that last one. Got choices and a lot of a lot of things narrowed down. Uh, let's see in here. Uh, D wants how much for the jersey in the back? The jersey you got the number eighty two in the background. Oh, uh, Tommy Trumbull. That's my that's my one of my good friends using the same uh. Same agency, so but I, I switched out of the agency that we was with. But you know, that's, that's the bro. I don't think that jersey's up for sale, sir. Oh, uh, yeah, nah, that's that's game worn after the game. He signed it and uh gave it to me when we played them. Um, we switched to football for a minute. So, uh, how old were you when you started getting into football? Um, the first time I got into football, I was five. Um, I started off playing flag football, and it was a big thing because. The only flag league was only 10, 11, 12 year olds. Didn't have a like for like five, six, seven, eight. It only yeah. started at 10. So I had to, only way I was able to play was my dad became a coach in the league. And I ended up on the team. And that's where it started. And I played running back. And none of the 10, 11 year old, 12 year olds could catch me. So they was like, it's, it's not fair. Like he's too small and too quick. Like that's not fair. He shouldn't be out here. So then I killed I killed that league when I was like I said I was five six, and then I it got boring because it just was so easy. Yeah. So when I turned seven, 
I told my dad, I was like, I think I want to play tackle football. Like, I don't, I, don't, I feel like I don't want to play flag anymore. So then he was like, okay. He took me to uh, one of my friends played uh, at this place called East Chester Blue Devils. And he took me over there. Same thing over there. They only accepted, you know, older kids. They kept telling me, oh, he should go play flag. And then they was like, wait, which one is your son? And at that point, I was playing Killer Carrier. Most, if you guys don't know what, what no game that is, it's pretty much um, whoever has the ball, you got to go tackle them, and they got to keep the ball the longest. And I had the ball, and they saw me run across the field, and they was like, matter of fact, he could play. He could play. He, he, he's yeah. cool. Like, so that, that around speed. that time, so that's when I started. You got that speed. So you come from a family of athletes, like your own family athletes? or? Uh, yeah, so my brother, he played football. He went to Western Kentucky. Uh, football scholarship. My sister. Uh, WKU? WKU? Yeah, yeah. My, brother, uh, my sister. It's like, a few hours away from me. Yeah, my sister uh, played softball at Mississippi Valley State um, on a softball scholarship. And then my dad was pretty good back in the day. So it just was bound to happen for me. So. Yeah, so how did you get into uh, Syracuse? Um. So in college, I. Uh, and my June, my sophomore year was the turning point where I started to get a lot of offers, and I was getting smaller offers my my sophomore year, and then when my junior year hit, that was like, you know, the turning point where it became okay. Like now, football is serious at this point because now I'm getting scholarships from uh, all types of schools, and right. you know, most of the the main reason why I chose Syracuse is because my mom, like, she's not really a traveler, and she's always always got work, so. Being home was like the best thing for me, and you know, not a lot of people can say like I wanted to go play for my hometown, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty legit, man. Um, let me see. You get to some other question here. Do you think Remy Mysterio should get another title run before he retires? What do you think about that? What what title are we talking about? I'm assuming he means the world title. Oh no, you can give him like. Uh, United States title, something like that. Not, I don't think he should have another like a world title. Yeah, I feel like uh, at this stage in Rey Mysterio's career, he's just more of a mentor to his son, you know. But yeah, and, uh, I don't think he really needs another world title run, you know. I think maybe him and his son could be tag champs again, they can get like a good run as tag team champions. But I'm pretty sure he's more of just there to be a mentor to Dominic and everything to help him, yeah. You know, be a part of the future of, of the business, you know. So, how do you feel about Dominic overall? Is he is he, is he growing on you, or how do you, I mean, because for me, he's 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 there, but I feel like there's a lot of things he got to work on too. For me, like I would have preferred him to start off at NXT, yeah, and then go way up to the main roster. When he first like went, when I first started to see him wrestle, I thought he was pretty sloppy. Like I thought he was pretty slow, pretty sloppy. Like his moves didn't look as as a uh, as good as as Ray, like when you see Ray go out there, he, he's gonna go fast and it just looked clean. Like so in the beginning, he didn't look so clean, but then now that like, I feel like he he took time and and working on his craft and, and and getting pretty good. So you know he's pretty he's still young. I got to look at it that way. He's still he's still learning, so he has a lot to learn. But right now he he grew on me a lot. I think I, I like him now than before I when I first saw him. Yeah, I feel like he's still got a lot to learn, too. Um, maybe I think they should probably maybe consider putting him back down in NXT or have him start NXT and do something, you know, uh, help him build his own character, get his own identity, uh, which could help. Yeah, that, that too. I don't I don't really like how, like, he got the whole, like, Rey Mysterio vibe because I feel like even his wrestling gear, like, it don't look right on him. Like, it just look funny. Yes. Um, I don't know. I just feel like when they brought him up to do the whole thing with sets and everything, it was just like, they're throwing him right into the wolves, you know, right to the fire, yeah. you know, like, which is fresh and new. I don't know if he was ready for that yet. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, what about the, what is your dream? That's a good question. Dream WrestleMania match that you'd like to see happen. That, uh, that was easy. I definitely want to see Roman versus CM Punk. Roman versus CM Punk. That would be, that would be big. I, look, I already got the storyline for it too in my head. I'm like, Roman said he's the best in the world and got Paul Heyman. Now you bring back CM Punk who left as the best in the world. So it's like, who's the real best in the world now? Mm, I like that. I mean, that would all be if <coughs> either if WWE and AEW can work together or if CM Punk comes back to WWE. Yeah. Uh, if I had to pick a dream match, I would want to see Seth Rollins versus Kenny Omega 
That's what I want to see. That too. I like Kenny Omega. I feel like that would be a that would be a pretty sick match. I think Kenny probably could come to WWE at some point because um, I know they were really really close to signing him um, before, when AEW was getting started. But it was you know the creative mm-hmm. control aspect and all his friends were going to AEW. It was more or less the side that he chose. I feel like we want. I feel like if he comes, we won't see him until Royal Rumble. Possibly. Possibly. I feel like he, he has a very good chance of going there, though. I feel like uh, I feel like he has a very good chance of going there at least once. It may not be long term, but I feel like for his career, I feel like it would be that what if if he never goes there. You know what I mean? So like, I yeah. think he'll probably end up going there just to see how it'll turn out. Um, House of Black or <clears throat> excuse me, House of Black or the Wyatt family. Which one do you prefer personally? I got the Wyatt family. Uh, House of Black is dope. I do like House of Black, but they're still kind of fresh and new in AW. Uh, the yeah. Wyatt family, I would say, intrigued me a lot too. Uh, when they first came around 2013, I believe it was. Um, they really did intrigue me. The whole Wyatt family and Shield stuff that was crazy. Like, that was just like, yeah, uh, I was, a, I'm a big fan of the Wyatt family because it's different. They're, they're like, they had that horror aspect to them too. And horror is one of my favorite things too. So, they they tied that together and I was like yeah they they legit. Uh, do you think John Cena will get his 17th title reign? If so, when and where? Ooh. See, I feel like this will tie in with him and Randy Orton because how so? Because so? because Randy Orton is almost he could he could. Uh, Beat the record, Ric Flair record too, with the with the titles. Yeah, Randy's got four. And John, so it's like you got them going against each other. Like, damn, who like who uh, who would do it? Randy, uh, Randy, right now has fourteen, so he would need to win, you know, a couple more times. Yeah. Um, If one of the two had to break it, which one would you prefer, Randy or Cena? Randy, because Randy's been here. He's been around for a little while. He really don't go off, get off, go off TV. But uh, I feel like he deserves it more than anything. I think I would prefer Randy too, just because of you know, the story would fit better for me. Um, I think for a lot of people, just because Ric Flair was a mentor to Randy and evolution and everything, so you know, kind of like yeah. culminates to back what I mean. John Cena is my favorite wrestler of all time, so I mean, I ain't gonna be upset if yeah. you know, if John Cena is the one to beat it. I don't think Rand, I don't. I mean, honestly though, realistically to me, I don't really think Randy or, or John Cena really need that for their legacy. I mean, yeah, they they, they don't. Um. Do you think uh, AJ Styles needs a faction to go against Edge? What do you think about that? AJ gets his own faction? No, I, I didn't even like him when he was with Omos, honestly. I no, think I he's, he's, yeah, he's better by himself. Uh, I mean, maybe if it's like a uh, – I don't know. I don't know. Maybe like if it's a uh, – a bullet club type thing, maybe. Maybe that could be something different. But I mean, as far as like, because I, I mean, I was with you. I was not feeling the whole Omos. Yeah, I, don't, I was not. Feeling it was that. boring. It was it, that that kind of was killing his character too. It was like, yeah, I was not feeling that whole tag team with Omos, man. Like, yeah, it, it made me devalue AJ a little bit for that whole run. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I get why they did it. You know, put him with Omos and try to help Omos out. You know what I mean? Because they they obviously got high hopes for him. But there was so many people he could have put. They could have put him with. Like him and AJ don't even go together. Like, it, like it didn't even look right. Yeah, they could have put him. I mean, honestly, they probably could have just put him with MVP and Bobby Lashley to begin with. You know what I mean? Like to start yeah. off, and then you could have just had Omos turn on Bobby eventually. You know what I mean? Like they could have the whole. He should have been in the hurt business for real. If we're being honest, that would have been sick. <clears throat> then they yeah. broke it up. So this is my guy Lewis right here. I told you the football fan. He's a big Dolphins fan. Uh, he wants to know what wrestler does <clears throat> Coach Mike Daniel resemble the most. <laughs> um, that's a good one. Uh, let me think. Eugene. Now let me stop. <laughs> Eugene, chill. <laughs> um, that's a tough one. I don't know. I, I gotta. I gotta. I gotta re- do some uh, research and look. Let's say Eugene. Eugene, yeah, Eugene was pretty valid though, man. I like yeah, Eugene. I have people who probably didn't even remember him. Uh, <clears throat> thoughts on Wheeler Yuta joining the Blackpool Combat uh, Club with Regal? I like it. First off, if people haven't seen the match with Moxley 
and uh, Yuta on Rampage, and I highly recommend you go watch it because the match was I absolutely see that. Bro, the match was. I recommend you you watch it. It's probably you might, you might, you might probably see it on YouTube now. It was on uh, Rampage, uh, found on YouTube, and I'm sure you can find it somewhere. But the match was sick. The match was absolutely yeah, I sick. Uh, I it, 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 and watch it. it definitely got me into uh, into Wheeler Yuta a lot more. Like that that match was was absolutely phenomenal. That that match was probably sick. Uh, so I definitely recommend if you have uh, if you haven't seen that match for anybody, I highly recommend you go check it out. And then. You could probably give your opinion on Willa Yuta. So I, I like the group, though. I like the collaboration, though. I, I'm excited to see what, what they do. Um, you know, Moxley and Danielson put together is pretty cool. AEW is really big on factions, too. You know what I mean? Like, they love factions. So yeah. Like, like, putting factions together. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I think Rhea Ripley will join Edge and Priest. So there's been rumors going out there that Rhea Ripley was going to be joining the group. She would fit in quite perfectly, honestly. He has the look for me. I think uh, the two Hold women. Up. Are... Speaking, what? Speaking of that, I could have swore, like the past Monday night, they were supposed to have a title, a tag team title match for that. They was, yeah, they was. Right? Yeah. Am I tripping? They was. They announced it and everything. It was. It was announced and advertised. I think they. Uh, I don't know. River Ripley, I guess, wasn't there or something. They announced it for the next. So not supposed to happen next Monday. So I mean, I guess. She didn't show up, or she wasn't there. Something going on. I don't know. Like she had something going on, but I, I I thought I was tripping. I thought I, I misheard it. As I misheard it or something. No, no. It definitely. But, she definitely was. Uh, she definitely was. was the, the match was definitely advertised, but then they switched it up last minute. So I mean, I get. My guess is that she probably had something going on, so she couldn't show up to TV or something. That's 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 just my process of thinking. So I don't know yeah. for sure. But I love the idea of Rhea Ripley joining the group with Edge and Priest. And there's another woman I think would fit well in this group would be Shotzi too. I think Shotzi would fit a lot oh, well. Yeah. She has the look too, you know, the tattoo. She's got she really into like the horror gimmick, uh, and it gives her something to do because they're not really doing much with it right now. So I like the idea of her getting thrown in there too. I've also heard rumors that uh, Tommaso Ciampa is going to be thrown in the group too. So that could be pretty sick too, Tommaso Ciampa. Yeah, I just I just hope that they don't make it corny, like. I feel like right now it's, it's it's like catching my catching my attention for real. Like, yeah. But I just hope they don't just make it stupid. Like, it's just pointless to do that. Uh, <clears throat> AP says shout out from Yonkers. Uh, you are you from? Are you so you say from New York? Are you from Yonkers? Is that where you from? The yeah, Yonkers, I'm from, yeah, I'm from Yonkers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah that's why I figured in. Appreciate uh, it, brother. Nasir said you don't want the 49 ers smoke. <laughs> Hey, what's your? Uh, we want all, uh, all the smoke. What's your favorite? Uh, let's see. What's your favorite? Uh, your favorite faction of all time? Of all time, DX. DX. Uh, my personal favorite. If I had to choose, my personal favorite would probably be the Shield. Honestly, I, I mean, Evolution was always my number one, but. After the shield run, like they was just, oh, they was just so gangster, bro. Like, I also like uh the brood. I brood like is pretty cool too. NWO, yeah. Um, yeah. NWO is up there for me too. Four Horsemen, shout out to the Four Horsemen. Uh, let's see, who you got winning money in the bank? So we both said Cody Rhodes. I think Cody Rhodes is both yeah. our favorites. If it's Cody not gonna be Cody, Cody Rhodes, who, who who do you see? If it's not gonna be Cody, um. Matt Riddle. Oh, Riddle. If it's not going to be Cody, I'm going to say Austin Theory. I think it's going to be Austin Theory. It's not going to be Cody. Uh, now that you said that. <laughs> now that you said Austin that. Theory. Yep. It's somebody that I – it seems like they're really high on him, which they should be. I, I like Austin Theory a lot. Um, but yeah. I yeah. think uh, I think it'll be Austin Theory if it's not going to be Cody Rhodes. Uh, so, oh, so people in the chat said up to heal Kevin this year. They said that she had COVID protocol. So, uh, uh so that's why she wasn't she wasn't there. So, uh, well, I, thought, your, I just thought I was tripping. Do you have a favorite John Cena shirt for sure? My favorite that's in my closet somewhere. But the uh, the OG Hustle Low Team Respect shirt, the one he came out with at WrestleMania 22, you know, got kind of got like the Cena symbol with the black and white and everything. I had to get I had to cop that when they sold that again on the shop. I got to get that. I think mine was um, when he had the Army Fatigue uh, Bulldog. The Bulldog, yeah. That was yeah, pretty sick. That was my favorite one. That was pretty sick. Uh, <clears throat> he said you should face Malik one-on-one on the football field and game C wins. Yeah. Listen, uh, 
I'm not like him. I am not an athlete. I'm the opposite. <laughs> I was not blessed with the athletic abilities. Uh, I played football once. Uh, I played well, I played football in elementary school once, but I didn't like the physical contact. First time I got hit, like, no, not it for me. Uh, basketball I played once, but I, I didn't know what I was doing, so I wasn't really good. You know, I mean, I was never. I was more. I'm more of a sports fan. I'm more of a watcher. I like to watch and see things. So, so fun. So I'm gonna give you a fun fact. So. When I learned how to tackle, I used to watch Edge do the spear, and I started to spear people when I was playing football. <laughs> and then later down the line, they made it illegal. So you can't do it no more. You can't do it no more. That's not, that's really how I used to learn how to tackle and watch Edge. And uh, Batista, do you think The Rock will come back to face Roman at WrestleMania next year? Yes or no? What do you think about that? Um, I feel like. They should definitely instead of if not WrestleMania, SummerSlam. You think but, it's gonna happen eventually? Like you think for sure if it's sure gonna happen in your mind? Yeah, I feel like it's gonna happen. I think it'll happen too. Uh I think it'll happen probably next year at WrestleMania because it's in LA, so I feel like like true. And honestly, I don't think I don't think Roman will have the title at <laughs> that point. But if he does yeah, who knows though? What if he does? Shoot. He if, just he, might. All right, if he doesn't have the title, then he has to lose it. He has to lose it like pretty soon in order for him to get it back for around that time. Um, I got, I, yeah, I got my, I, I, I kind of think I got my predictions now for how I think he's going to lose it. But I mean, the way he's getting pushed, like, he, honestly, he might have it till next year. Who knows, man? Honestly, people, people didn't think he was going to have it this long. So, I mean, he, he might, but I think he definitely loses it before, before, uh, WrestleMania. So this is this is this is what I think should happen. So I think he should lose it at Money in the Bank. Enter the Money in the Bank match. Win the Money in the Bank. Ooh. Who does he lose it to? Uh, mm. I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe I mean maybe Cody Rose can face him at Money in the Bank and he and Cody can win the yeah. title. Or? Yeah. And then yeah, he just somehow he just somehow get the money in the bank, and then he could hold it until WrestleMania. He could hold it as long as you want. That'd be crazy. Uh, because his okay. character will be the same if he had the money in the bank. Like he could be like, I'm still ahead of the table. Like I just, I'm just waiting for my opportunity. Like, yeah, and he'll tease it each week. He'll tease it each week. Like he's about to cash it in. Yeah, and then he just don't. Like, uh, how do you feel about Braun Breaker? That's what Lewis wants to know. I don't know if you've seen much of him. Yeah, stuff. so he just was on. He just was on Raw, uh, not long ago. Yeah, he had the match with Dolph Ziggler. I think yeah, two, two, um, two. I feel like he's solid. I feel like, um, in the future he'll be he'll be a top guy for sure. He fits the uh, he fits the build that Vince McMahon likes anyway. So, I think so too. I mean, if you notice when they revamped NXT to 2.0, he instantly became their top guy. You know, so they. Yeah. Braun Breaker to be the top guy. So I feel like he's one of their next top stars. Uh, who do you think should face uh who do you think Bianca should face at SummerSlam? What's your favorite I quit match? Uh favorite John Cena. Oh, your favorite John Cena match. Sorry. Your favorite John Cena match is the I quit match. That's valid. Uh my favorite John Cena match would have to be Cena versus Edge at Unforgiven, the TLC match. Yeah. Or should Bianca face at SummerSlam? Maybe uh, I'm trying to think of some people should be out. Ray Ripley. I want to say I was that. about to say that. I was about to say yeah. that too. Especially if she joins Edge and, and yeah. Uh, Priest, yeah. I would have to say Rhea Ripley. That would be pretty sick. I, I'd love to see that. I feel like uh, at that point too, if if she's in that faction, Rhea Ripley will be kind of uh, rejuvenized to be back up there in mm -hmm. that top spot. So I feel like that that would be that's a feed right there that that should happen. Um, but are you well, have my favorite John Cena match. Uh, I might not like this one, but it was when he fought uh, the Great Khali. Because when Great Khali came into the WWE, I the really thought Khali? he was. Listen, it, it's a, it's just it's just the whole memory behind it. Great Khali was an awful wrestler, but <laughs> he's very. But very, when very average. But when I was younger, I really thought he was making people bleed out their mouth. Yeah. So so when I saw him beat. The great color, I was like, I was like, wow, that's just, like this is crazy. So I'm gonna say that. Yeah, uh, he, he did give Great Khali his best match. I think that you talking about that Falls Guy Anywhere match. Yeah, 
And he picked yeah, him up yeah. and that put him over the and, uh, Yeah, that was that was pretty crazy. That was a good one. Also, also when he fought Bobby Lashley at uh the Great American Bash. Yeah, that was that, that, was, that was a good match. one. That was a battle match. Uh, let's see, we'll take a couple more. Uh, do you think uh, Rhea and Lib will have a feud? I think they could possibly have a feud. Yeah, it seems like they're kind of already teasing that a little bit, actually. A little uh, feud. Yes, yeah, like, like I'll go back to her joining Edge, and then like she just turn her back on her, and and just the whole classic. During the tag match, she jumps off the off the rope and just walks out. That probably will start it. Uh, I think uh, they probably will have a maybe. Uh, I mean, maybe they even they, maybe they could even add live to the faction. I mean, that could be something to her to do. You know, I mean, if it could change her whole gimmick and change her whole character and make you know make her something a little bit different. Uh, that way, she's not just kind of falling off, and she's still at least doing something on TV. You know. Now it's a plot twist. Now she joined and read out. So I feel like, oh, so how would you feel about that if they had live join instead of Rhea? Like it was a plot twist. People thought it was gonna be Rhea, then it's live. That would be that would be great for the storyline for sure. Because everybody can be like, oh, Rhea, Rhea's going to turn on her now. It's Liv that turned on her. And right. like, I, don't, I don't know if people going to like that, though. I feel like a lot of people kind of be yeah. that. Just because people still – I think people are kind of already expecting it now. Like, they're already anticipating that it's going to be Rhea Ripley. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. if it's not going to be her, then I feel like people might be a little bit upset about that. But um, So, let's see. i got a couple questions right here. So, so if people get to know you better, who are your top five favorite wrestlers of all time? Your personal top five favorites. All right, yeah, yeah. So my top five. No, it had to be in order. Michaels. Yeah, not, not in order. Shawn Michaels. Okay. Uh, John Cena, Randy Orton, Undertaker. Um, I gotta throw Jeff Hardy in there because he's the reason why I like wrestling. So. So you said you got Cena, you got Jeff Hardy, you got Taker, Sean, and then you said Randy Orton. That's pretty valid. That's, yeah. that's, a, good, that's, that's a good list. Uh, I said mine before for people who maybe missed it. Uh, my five are John Cena, Undertaker, Eddie Guerrero. Uh, just like you, Eddie Guerrero is the reason I got into wrestling too, so I got to yeah. have my five. The Rock and Kurt Angle. Those would be those, those would be mine. I like I like I like I like Kurt Angle. <laughs> I feel like I feel like. Uh... They did him like they did him bad when he came back, like not too long ago. Oh, when they did, I don't like how they didn't. Yeah, I don't like how they had his one. Like his last match would have been against John Cena. That last match of the WrestleMania, yeah. like the fact that no, no, no respect to Baron Corbin, but it's like, come on, bro, like it, it should. Or it should even Edge, happen. I wouldn't even have been mad if they Edge was to be his last match because Edge is the one who took his hair, right? Yeah, is the one who shaved him ball, but Edge Edge hadn't came back yet though, so he didn't come back to the oh, next yeah, year. That's right. That's right. But it should have waited. <clears throat> uh, let's see. What's your top five favorite theme songs of all time? Your personal favorite themes. Ooh, top five. Got the music uh, ones. On. Definitely John Cena's old uh, Thugonomics. Thugonomics uh, entrance. Valid. That um that's top tier for sure. I like I like Kane's uh I like what what is it called? The slow chemical? Yeah, I like that with one. The lyrics, with the lyrics? Yep. Yeah. That yeah. one was dope. Um Jeff Hardy's uh no more words. Valid, valid. Um CM Punk. Which one? Um he had, two, he had two bangers, so he did though. Um, call it personality. Personality. Uh, that one, yeah. That's cool. Lastly, lastly, I would have to say, uh, um, tough choices. The old, the old, the old Rey Mysterio. Um. This was, I forgot. I forgot what, how long. I forgot how old it was. Um, you talking about the what, one with that jumping out the sky? Yeah, R E Y yeah. Mystery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That one, that was too. That one was sick. That was entrance he had was pretty sick too. When he come on, he jumped with the, the with sky. the and it had the whole different mass shifting. Yeah. 
That was, yeah, that was dope. Uh, my themes, my top five themes, <clears throat> I would definitely have uh, CM Punk, Cult of Personality, uh, Batista, Walk Alone, anytime that come on, and that's just... That's oh, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> uh, Edge, Metalingus, definitely uh, Triple H, The Game. Uh, I always love that Triple H scene. And my number one... But definitely have to be voices, bro. That Randy Orton thing, that voice. Oh uh, yeah. So. See, it's yeah. T- it's tough. Like, like maybe you said top ten. I could have gave you a real top ten, but you said top five. You give me a top ten. Then. Do a top ten. So you already had those five. We should. What, you could just start another five in there. All right. Uh, definitely. Uh, Shawn Michaels. Every time ten? I heard that one, it was. It was oh, okay. I did the whole dance and the whole pose. Um, who else? I like Matt Hardy's. Matt Hardy's team is very underrated too. His is underrated. Yeah, I like I like Matt Hardy's. Um, I like Cody Rhodes. Uh, the the what's it, what's it called again? Smoking mirrors. Smoking mirrors. That one was okay. I mean, that was <laughs> all right. I mean, the first version of it was cool. Uh, the, the second had, version was was uh, more upbeat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smoking Mirrors is, is pretty cool, though. Um, yeah, and Randy Orton. Randy Orton voices. Burning my light is valid too, though. Burning Burn, yeah, light. burning my light. That was. I didn't know. I didn't know he he hated that when I was younger. I didn't either until I think he until a couple years afterwards. So he yeah, he, he was, was like he hated that song. It's crazy though, because everybody else loved it. Um, I would have to say the last one would have to be the one time Undertaker came out to uh Johnny Cash, uh, Ain't No Grave. Yeah, that was pretty sick. I want, uh, I guess, I wonder why they didn't keep that one. I guess it may be a copyright or something. Um, yeah, that was when he came out to that. I was like, like, yeah, this is. I thought they like was gonna change change the theme song, and that was that. But then they went right back to the old one. Uh, let me see. <clears throat> Christian, some people saying Christian is close your eyes. Rebel Heart, valid theme. Uh, my nice. time is not better than the game theme. I'm sorry, sir. That is very, that is very invalid. My time might be like Triple H is like third or fourth best theme song. And the, like, yeah. uh, evolution theme is valid. That's a valid theme. Very valid. That's That would, that would be Triple H's second best theme, the evolution theme. That, that theme song is just... That Motorhead, Motorhead theme, bro. The Motorhead theme songs are just so. Oh my god, they're so incredible. Though. Like you gotta, you gotta throw DX in there as an honorable mention. DX theme is valid too. That's a valid theme. Why well, he's getting trouble in school because of them? <clears throat> Who's your top five favorite women wrestlers of all time? Your top five. Um, Lita for sure. Yeah, that's my number one. Uh, Mickey James. Mickey James valid. Candice Michelle. Um, oh, you said Candace Michelle? Okay. Yeah. Candace Michelle. Lita, Candace Michelle. Best Phoenix. Best Phoenix. Um, who did I say the last one? James, last one. Um, Ed's first thing is pretty good, too. I would have to say... Uh, Bianca. Bianca Belair. I would say uh, <clears throat> Lita, Sasha Banks, Bailey, AJ Lee, and Trish would be. Bro, I forgot about AJ Lee. She was AJ Lee. She was she sick. Was AJ Lee is up there for sure. Uh, let's see. Top 10 themes right now, I would have to say definitely uh, Roman Reigns' theme is in there. Uh, Seth Rollins' theme is one of my favorites, bro. His, his theme right now is absolute fire. Uh, definitely Cody Rhodes. Now that he's back in there, um, throw I'm gonna throw Bianca Belair's theme in there because I really like her theme. I've been rocking her theme for a minute. I'm gonna throw. Let me see. Chris Jericho's right now from AEW. Uh, Judas, CM Punk because it's he's still there, so I gotta throw his in there. Randy uh, Orton. Randy Orton. Uh, I'm gonna throw Edge's in there too, even though he just changed about. I do. I do rock with Edge's new theme. It grew on me. Um, John Moxley's theme, I do like the Wild Thing theme. I like that one a lot, so I'm gonna throw that one in there too. I, hey, I still like the Miz's theme song. 
Oh yeah, Miz's theme too. Yeah. Kenny Omega's theme too. That's up there too, man. Kenny Omega's theme is a banger. The dog. You you said them all. <laughs> the Kenny Omega thing is up there for me. I, I'm I'm gonna put that one in there too because there's a lot of good ones I could have. But ooh, this is a good one right here. Who do you think should have ended the streak? You think it should have been uh, Shawn Michaels? Or, yeah, you should Shawn Michaels. Or Edge. I say Edge. How did he, he feel? Edge was, the, Edge was the perfect bad guy to do it. Like at that time, he just was the, like everybody hated Edge. Like it was like the icing on the cake for him to do that. How did you feel when uh, when Brock took the streak? I feel like Brock didn't need to do it though. He definitely didn't. I don't think he did. I mean, it was it was obviously believable because he was Brock Lesnar. But yeah, yeah, I'm sure you were watching. So when that when that happened, what was going through your mind? Like when that in that moment, I was like. At first, I was I was angry that they even ended the streak in general. Right. I was like, man, I should have just let him keep the streak and let that be like his legacy, like the streak. But I was like, at first, I was like, ain't no way. I was like, ain't no way. So I went on Twitter because I forgot, I forgot where I was at when WrestleMania, that WrestleMania, uh, I think I had a game that day. Mm-hmm. So I didn't get a chance to watch it until I got home because I recorded it, but everybody was, spoiled it. And was on Twitter, and I was like, "Oh man!" So yeah, so you already had all the spoils. Oh yeah. Um, I don't. It doesn't bother me that Brock ended the streak. I definitely don't think he needed to end the streak. But if I had to pick somebody to end it, I think it should have been like Bray Wyatt or Roman Reigns, uh, somebody that yeah, you would have solidified. Especially somebody like Bray Wyatt, man. Bray Wyatt would have been perfect, man, for that for that streak. Um. What do you think uh, Seth's best character is? Seth Rollins' best character. I like I like what he's doing right now. The Messiah was good too, though. A lot of people didn't like the Messiah, but I, I was into the Messiah gimmick. Like, that gimmick was was pretty sick. I, I liked it. Yeah, you know the architect is pretty good too. All of his characters have been pretty good, but the uh, the visionary character, I think he's doing the best work he's ever done right now. So uh, he got he got a lot of range. Uh, my guy right here. Uh, so what I would do is have Cody win Money in the Bank. Drew beats Roman uh, for the title of the UK pay-per-view. Have Co- Roman go out of the title picture with The Rock. Hopefully then uh, you turn Drew heel so Cody can cash in on and possibly rock the mania. Uh, this is what I said. So this is what I said I think is going to happen, possibly. I think Cody will win Money in the Bank. Uh, Roman gets to the two-year mark as Universal Champion, which will be August 30th is when he won the championship. The UK pay per view was on September 3rd, just a couple of days after the run when we get to the two year mark. And Drew McIntyre being from Europe, I think mm-hmm. uh, Drew will beat Roman in Europe and the place will go absolutely insane. Because um, WWE still owes him that moment because when he was going to, when he was going to get that moment, obviously the pandemic happened. So he never, when he beat Brock for the title, none of the fans were there get, to uh, experience that moment. You know what I mean? Like he did it in front of nobody. So, I still feel like he's owed that moment and that that push as world champion in front of the people. So that's what I think will happen. Well, for me, honestly, I think Drew is like my least favorite wrestler. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> really? <laughs> Only because it was like they were trying to force him. Like they were trying to force him on me. Like not me, but like the like fans. Like so, I was just like, nah, I don't really because our. What made it worse was I remember when he was in the WWE way before and he was just a pushover character. Like, yeah. so him being that and then this now, it, like, the old him is is brain is is in my brain. So I can't, I can't look at him as. as so you think they player. uh, you think they uh, they forced his WWE championship push too hard, like the title yeah. push too hard. Yeah, I feel like it, it was. Feel, or, it didn't feel organic. It didn't feel organic at all. It just was like. Like how they did Roman way back. Yeah, I can I can see that. Uh, I do think his his title push was a little forced, a little bit. You know what I mean? Uh, especially when he was consistently in the title picture for like he was like 15, 16 months or something like that. You know what I mean? Like it was yeah. a long period of time. But I still want to see Drew get that moment. I still feel like he's top guy material. I feel like he could he could be one of their top guys for sure. I mean, if he wins in the UK too, I mean the place will go crazy. I mean, he beats Roman in the UK, the place will go absolutely insane. So. Uh, have you met? I'm sure. I'm sure he has. But have you met Tariq yet? Yeah, I see him in the locker room. I see him in the locker room. We talk in the locker room. 
Uh, in person though, like the yeah. speed, like what does it look like in person? Like watching this man run, like when you see it in person, having to cover this man. Well, thank God we didn't get to that part yet, but we've been like conditioning and stuff and, and just running, but it looks exactly like a cheetah, literally. Uh, do, do you think AJ Styles needs one, uh, one more world title run? Uh, I can get behind that. I wouldn't be upset. I like to see it happen. I think he could be, uh, you know, he hasn't won the universal title yet, so maybe he get the universal title at least once yeah. and give him a run with that one. Uh, do you, uh, do you think the duo of Hill and Waddle resembles Paul London and Brian Kendrick? <laughs> First of all, Paul Lennon and Brian Kendrick are the most underrated tag teams of all time. Gotta be, bro. They were so. Oh my! Well, you unlock so much memories with that one. They used to so come out with the with the blue or the red or like the teal with the mask, and they came out with Ashley. That that was dope. It was very underrated, but, bro. Because people may not people forget like they were the tag team champions for like a long time, bro. Like yeah. a very long time, and they was putting on great matches too. But, um. Yeah, they could they could be Paul Levin and Brian Kendrick, but me 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 and Javon, you know, we the Hardy boys, so that's even better. The, the, the Hardys, I do like. Uh, I did like them at the tag team, you know, London and Kendrick. You know, I didn't feel like they was a little slept on, talked about. You know what I mean? Because they, they like they made tag team them the Hardys. Uh, um, who who else was in the picture at that time? Deuce and Domino. Eminem, yeah. Eminem, they they made the tag team division like so much fun at that time. That ladder match, remember the, the ladder match they had Armageddon. The match that, yeah. Like you heard his name, heard his face, yeah. yeah. Uh, let me see, uh, Lewis, right here. This is the guy I told you he's a big fan. He said he needs listen. You're giving Lewis hope. He he has hope <laughs> in his life that that the Dolphins can. Can make some noise, you know what I mean? So we're gonna we're gonna, we gonna make some noise. You got to think too, bro. I mean, you know, growing up, he had to deal with Tom Brady, the Patriots, you know. So I mean, that was if you're a Dolphins yeah. fan, that's tragic. That's beyond tragic. Right? That dynasty was that dynasty was was, but, was 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 hurtful for people. So listen, last year we was just we was one game short of making the playoffs. So hey, I can't wait to see what that we have on the team. I, I can't like wait to see we're gonna make some playoffs. Uh, Going up against Buffalo, y'all in Buffalo is gonna be. That's gonna be tough. That's gonna be tough. Yeah. Buffalo was there. They was close last year too. They was there. They was there. Yeah. We just gotta take it one game at a time for real. So, I, I like I like what y'all got though the roster and everything. I'm interested to see what y'all can do uh, as, as a team. So I think y'all y'all gonna be. I mean, y'all definitely gonna be better than it was last year. I mean, yeah. Think, you know, Tyreek and everything is just plus with Jalen Waddle and then <laughs> bro, like it's it's. Uh, who, who do you think the next guy coming to WWE from AEW will be? Um, I forgot. I forgot. Uh, I forgot bro's his name. Um, he related to the. He related to Roman, and then. Uh, he's in AEW. Oh, I, I I I don't know why I saw NXT in my head just now. Oh, you talking about Solo Sokol, yeah, yeah. You talking yeah. about the uh, AEW? I have a feeling uh, Chris Jericho is going to come back soon. You think Jericho will come back to WWE? I think he has to. I think uh, if I had to, I think it probably will be Moxley. I've, I'm hearing big rumors that he could be going back. MJF's another one I can see going over there too at some point. Uh, MJF, somebody I can definitely see jumping ship to go over there. I want to see him go against the Miz. Especially on the mic, bro. And yeah. the on the mic would be. Whew. Uh, let me see. Let me see. I'm gonna take a couple more. We'll take a couple more questions here. Uh, then you guys we'll take a couple more questions. Let me see. Uh, if you was GM for a Royal Rumble uh, next year, how would you book the card? Ooh. So, excuse me. If Roman's still the champion, he got both titles. So. I would probably put him in the singles match. Maybe it was like Drew McIntyre or something. Um, and then as far as wins the Rumble, ooh, that would be tough. 
see, I wouldn't have Roman be the champion next year by the Rumble just because whoever wins the Rumble has to go on and you know face the champion at WrestleMania. And if you only have Rock and Roman, that doesn't really need a title involved. You know what I mean? So that match would be big enough by itself without a championship. So I I would give the Rumble win to somebody like AJ Styles or something. Somebody who who I think is giving that one win another belt. Maybe somebody like AJ Styles. Yeah. Uh, or man. Maybe like a Bobby Lashley or something. Somebody you know who hasn't got it yet. That you know you just give that under their resume. Um, but I would say I would, I would say maybe like AJ Styles wins the Rumble, and then maybe maybe you could have Seth be the champion. You could have Seth and AJ WrestleMania or something like that. That'd be pretty sick. See, I agree with what you said, but my thing is, would would the Rock versus Roman be exciting? Just exciting without the titles. I think so, yeah, because, I mean, I think the storyline would just be built strictly off of the head of the table. Like, who is the true head true. of the table of the family, you know what I mean? Because you know, everything Roman does is for the bloodline, for the family. Everything The Rock does really is for his family, too, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, they could do a story maybe where, like, say if, say if Roman loses to Drew in the UK, right? Say Roman drops the title to Drew. Mm-hmm. You could do a story maybe where, like, the bloodline, like the family, like the whole family sent the rock back to WWE to challenge Roman to see if he really deserves to call himself the head of the table, like to be in that spot, you know what I mean? Because coming with that spot comes with a lot of a lot of pressure. It comes with a lot of responsibilities, you know what I mean? So if you lose yeah. in big matches like that, maybe you send the rock back, you know, where he's like, Hey, I'm if if you want to be the head of the table, you gotta go through me or something like that. You know, something something that aspect. Yeah. I mean, it's going to sell out by itself. I mean, The Rock coming back is good. I mean, it's, it's The Rock. I mean, like. True. Like that would be but for me, I would, ra- I, would, I would rather see them fight for the title. Me personally. For both titles or just the universe title? Uh, both. For both of them. So if they both fight both. for the titles, who do you think wins? I say the only person that could beat Roman would be or have, have to be The Rock. So if Roman. Is this so? Are you? If, if is this if Roman is still the champion by then? Without if he's losing, still the champion by then. If he's still the champion by then. Without but losing. The only thing is, it's the, I would want him to lose. Or I would want Roman to lose just because it's like it's the Rock. Like you can't beat everybody. Like somebody has to beat you at some point. Like when I mean, he got to do at some point. Yes, yeah, I'm saying. But uh, the only thing about that is like the Rock isn't gonna be around long after. So if he wins, like how long is he gonna have those titles for? Yeah, and who's gonna beat him for it? I feel like uh, I feel like Roman definitely would win either way. Cause like, it, it, I mean, I would assume if The Rock came back, he would probably lose to Roman and then probably retire. Cause like you said, like he's probably not gonna, he probably won't even be there the next day for all. You know what I mean? Like, he yeah, probably right. not so yeah. Plus, he's doing all these movies, so he's not gonna have that much time to really so be I, in the I, WWE I, picture. I, yeah, so it's like, how long would he really? Kind of like, I mean, even though when he won the WWE title the last time. You know, when he won the title and everything, mm-hmm. and Punk and everything. I mean, he only had it for a couple months, but he only wanted this to lose it to John Cena. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, I feel like, uh, I feel like he wouldn't be able to have a run like that. You know, as for right now, yeah. especially you know the movies that he got going on in Hollywood. Yeah. So I don't, I don't, I don't see that happening. But that's how I knew John Cena was going to lose against him because he's he's making movies right now. So it's like, yeah. It would have been like I say because I figured Tina would stick around at SummerSlam. He's probably not gonna be around at SummerSlam. You know what I mean? So it's like he probably, yeah. he probably gonna be. He probably just came back just for this big match to help SummerSlam get the pay per view buys and everything. So yeah, it's just I I think he will lose the titles before WrestleMania next year. I think it's gonna happen in the UK at the pay per view. I really do. I, I think I think it will. If it's not gonna happen then, um, uh, then maybe he does hold the title for that long. But I just I think he gets to that two year mark because. The two year mark and the in that pay per view date are just very close together. You know what I mean? So it's like mm-hmm. to me, I can see WWE making it a lot of sense to have Drew being the one to beat Roman in the UK just for that response. Like, you know, he's from Europe, so like the place is gonna go crazy. Like if he if he yeah. wins the titles over there, you know, like it would be it would be it would be pretty sick. I feel like there are a lot of things you could do too if Cody has the money in the bank too. There are a lot of different stories maybe you could do with that, like you know. A lot of different, a lot of different scenarios that that could happen with that. I do not want to see Drew with the titles. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I think I'll take a break of wrestling if you become Sammy. I'll take a little break. Sure, don't like you that much, bro. The Drew hate is strong. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> <laughs>
I feel like the uh, the title run definitely killed it a lot for some people for Drew McIntyre because the way it was was pushed. I f- I do feel like his title run was a little bit forced, like too much, yeah. especially when he was when he didn't have the title, like the rematches that he was getting consistently. You know what I mean? Like that kind of also hurt it too. You remember you remember when Teddy Long was German and he'll make everybody fight the Undertaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty much how that's pretty much how it was with Drew. I feel like uh I don't know, I still feel like Drew's top guy material though. I feel like he's he's still up there. I mean he hasn't been in the world title picture for you know quite some time, but I first feel of like all, they- first of all, Bobby Lashley needs his he needs a uh he needs a title a title rematch because he didn't even lose his title for real and they made him go nope. from being the champion to doing something with MVP. It doesn't make sense. I think well, MVP's not with Omos. So I mean, they're, they're trying to build up Omos as much as they can. Uh, but I mean, I, th- I think Roman and Bobby it could happen. That probably could happen and be like money in the day. I, I would want to see that before before him and Drew. I mean, I think I think Bobby and Roman. I think that'll probably happen. Maybe money in the bank. I'll say maybe money in the bank. Maybe like SummerSlam or something. Um, but I, I mean, I don't I don't see Bobby Lashley beating Roman Reigns either though. Like, I, I don't. I, I don't either. I honestly like. I would believe I could see Drew McIntyre beating Roman more than, than Bobby Lashley. Like I would see, I could see the scenario of that happening more. That's how they would book it. But I do think Bobby would, deserves a rematch, though. I would let. I would rather anybody else do it, but <laughs> <laughs> and that would never. That would not change. I think. I think it will be Drew. If it's not going to be Drew, then this will be Cody. I think it definitely be Cody if it's not going to be Drew. How do you feel if it's going to be Cody? If Cody Rhodes is the one to do it, I would, like I said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be mad to that. Like, especially when he was like, he's doing it for his dad and everything. That I was like, oh yeah, like I wouldn't be mad if he won it for real. Uh, let me see what to come up with. Uh, besides the United States, where would you guys have WrestleMania? The UK. I'll put WrestleMania in the yeah. UK, bro. The UK definitely needs WrestleMania or Japan. Ooh, Japan WrestleMania that would be lit, bro. And WrestleMania, I definitely said the UK. Because even when, because I had a, we played uh Jacksonville over there, and the fans over there was, I'm talking about packing. It was loud. Yeah, it was, it was a cool vibe over there. So I feel like even if the rest of the day they'll get uh the same, the same uh love that we had got when we played over there, probably more. Uh. I definitely, I definitely would say the UK, Japan, and UK would be my two, but the UK does. I think they, they, they deserve WrestleMania. It's still uh, kind of surprising to me that they never really got one. Honestly, like I'm surprised they never yeah. even got a WrestleMania. I think though WWE keep continue to expand and getting bigger and bigger. I think they'll they'll expand over to. Uh, I think they'll expand over to WrestleMania to get there. I mean, they had to have at least once. So I mean, and if this pay, if this pay per view goes really well. And uh, in the UK, coming to September, then I think, I think they'll probably uh, get a WrestleMania. It, it definitely should. I got a question for you, though. Go ahead. It's pretty much a what if question. What What if right? The WWE's views is doing so well is because of Roman, right? Now he loses the title and the views drop so bad. What What, what should WWE do at that point? Well, I mean, if he loses, is Roman going to be off TV or is he still going to be there? He's still going to be there, but everybody just wants him to be the champ. Like, so it's like once he loses, it's like, yeah, I'm, like, I'm really not interested in this anymore. Like, well, I mean, it depends. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I know a lot of people who, who actually don't like Roman. So, like, I know I know people who stopped watching because of Roman. So, I feel like. I know a lot of people that started watching because of him as well. It's, it's a 50 50, though. It's, a 50, yeah. it's kind of the same, like, with the. Excuse me. It's the same with like John Cena. You know, I know a lot of people who said they stopped watching because of John Cena when he started getting his pushed. But then you had a lot of people like us when we're growing up. We we started watching because of him. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, it's a it's a 50 thing. Uh, like I feel like people. I mean, Roman got to lose at some point. He can't hold it. Like I said, he can't hold it forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has to lose it. Sometimes. At some point, he has to lose it. Now, if he does lose to Drew McIntyre. I feel like the people who like Drew McIntyre will be happy, like you know, especially the people in Europe, uh, the people who are Drew McIntyre fans, the people like you who aren't Drew McIntyre fans will probably be upset. <laughs> but, uh, but 
I feel I'm like off uh, Cody. I'm off of Cody. I mean, if Cody wins too, I, I would I would be happy. Um, whoever does beat Roman, though, I feel like it's going to be – needs to get pushed heavily, you know what I mean, because it's going to feel like a big deal because of how dominant he's being uh, and how his run's been. He hasn't been pinned since December of 2019, you know what I mean? So whoever does beat him definitely should be pushed as, you know, a top guy in the company. I don't think the viewership will go down, though. I don't think the viewership will go down, though. I think uh, – I don't know. I, I I I just think that for me, whenever he loses, I feel like it, it may attract people more just because they found out Roman loses. So you know, you want to see what happens next. Okay, now that Roman is lost, now what's gonna happen? How is Roman's character gonna be without the title? Because his whole champ, his whole title uh, reign has been involved, you know, with the head of the table character. So we haven't really seen what he can do uh, as the tribal chief without the title. So maybe he could even be more dangerous. Like. Imagine him losing. Now he can even be more dangerous to get it back. So, like, now that he lost, he could be even more unstoppable. So, look, this is how this is how you know when, if Roman is going if Roman's going to lose. If the Usos lose the tag team champions on the same pay per view before Roman wrestles, Roman's going to lose. I feel like that too. Uh, I mean, they're definitely going to unify the belts, though. They're going to have the they're going to have the raw tag. They they're going to be RK bro for the for the raw tag. Oh yeah. Title. So I mean, they're going to have all the gold in the bloodline, but. I think uh, I'm sticking with Drew. I think Drew is beating him in the UK. I'm, I'm sticking with it. I see it happening. Like I, this only only because of where it's at. Like I I can really see him winning in the UK now. If it doesn't, if it's not gonna be Drew, it's gonna be Cody Rhodes. Well, I think when when Drew won um, title, I think I, I stopped watching Raw. I, pretty much only time I watched was when uh, I wanted to see Randy Orton and uh, and the Fiend. Yeah. Yeah. You talking about the uh, the first time he went from Brock, or yeah? So you didn't even like Drew before then, before he even, no. before he even no. won the championship. <laughs> That's crazy, but Drew McIntyre yeah. valid, bro. He's valid. Don't get me wrong. He's a I, like I like his in ring stuff. Like he's a good wrestler. Like, he's a good wrestler, but him talking on the mic and doing all that extra stuff is corny. <laughs> so you don't like the way they use him. Yeah, this is corny. <clears throat> we'll see. We, we, we can see. Who was – uh? so we're talking about people we don't like before we get off here. Uh, who who was the wrestler that you hated the most when you were a kid? So growing up, the one wrestler that really used to piss you off. It's funny because it was Randy Orton. Randy Orton? It was, it was, I, used to, I used to hate Randy Orton so bad because he used to beat John Cena throughout the, like, throughout the weeks. Yeah. And then I was like, yeah, like, I really don't like this guy. But as I got older, it's like it's like the same with the Joker. Like when you was younger, like nobody really liked the Joker. Like it was like I like Batman. When you get older, you understand the whole Joker's mentality. Now you get older, you understand Randy's mentality. So it's like all right, like, I can see. Like, I like him now. Like yeah, mine mine was Edge. I was not rock. I was not feeling Edge <laughs> as a kid. Randy Orton never bothered me for some. I don't know why. I mean, I didn't like Randy Orton, but he never bothered me as much as Edge did. Like it's just now, Edge, Edge was Edge bothered me too, for sure. Him and uh, him and King Booker. I'm not rocking with him, bro. I didn't like King Booker either, bro. King Booker used to really piss me off. Uh, I like I like King Booker. Booker T was valid. I mean, when he was Booker T, valid. But when he turned into that King Booker gimmick, yeah, I was I was a <laughs> Um, who else? I used to hate Ryback. Right back. So you talking about when he was babyface or no matter what he was. Right back. <clears throat> I just thought it was I thought it was uh I just thought it was corny. Yeah, I was never heavily into uh right back either like that. I mean granted he was popular at one point, don't get me wrong. He was getting he was getting good. Yeah, like when he had the whole John Cena feud and everything, I was yeah, I was like, bro, I just don't like like I don't like how he wrestles, but I was, yeah, he, he was getting over at one point. I would probably say somebody else that didn't. Other than those two stand out on the top of my head. Um, what about right now? So, I mean, you talk about Drew McIntyre. Who's somebody that you, you somebody else that you're just not a fan of right now? You're like, I'm not really feeling that person. You at first, I'm going to lie to you. Uh, the Drew, at first, it was Damian Priest. Oh, so he wasn't rocking with Damian Priest? Uh, I was like, oh my God. Like, they're trying, like, they was trying too hard with him. Like, they was trying to. Like they were trying to give him a little push, but they were trying too hard. Like once he 
like once honestly once he got with Edge, I was like, okay, yeah, I could vibe with him now. Like, I mean, Damian Priest but, is pretty uh, cool. I, I did I did like Damian. Damian Priest is pretty cool though to me. He's pretty valid to me. Another one I used to give me that I used to hate was uh uh Snit uh Snitsky. No oh, god, Snitsky. Oh man, he used to uh, I used to hate him so much. Snitsky, remember when he punted the baby? Yeah. When he kicked the baby in the crowd, that was crazy. Yeah. He killed when he gave Lita the abortion too. When he, when she killed, yeah. when he the <laughs> bro, the they, stuff that they used to be able to get away with is crazy. Yeah. Thinking about it now, crazy storylines, bro. Crazy story. Edge bro. having sex in the rain. Well, it's crazy, bro. It's crazy. Oh man, yeah, because he, when he kicked the baby at first, and then he he made Kane fall on top of Lita when she was pregnant, you know, and then the baby yeah. died. Her stomach and shit. It was, it was, it was, it was even crazy. when they had, even when they had fake Kane, uh, when they had Triple H dressed up as Kane having sex with the dead bodies. Oh my god, the uh, the Katie Vick storyline when he, yeah, when they, you know, they used to do some crazy, some crazy stuff back in those eras, man. You just, you definitely want to see on TV today for sure, one hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. We'll take, we'll take with three more questions, and we'll go ahead and sign off here. So if you guys got I mean, three good questions. Be the best questions you can think of, guys, and then we're gonna sign off. Well, we said I hate Sammy with a passion. Not a Sammy Zayn fan. Sammy Zayn. Yeah. Somebody yeah. said. I hate. Somebody said Kofi Kingston. Oh. Kofi I Kingston. like Kofi Kingston. Yeah, Kofi Kingston is valid. Kofi Kingston is valid. I do like Kofi Kingston. Uh, take three. Well, wait, for, wait for some questions to get in hand. <clears throat> and then we'll take I'll take three questions and we'll, we'll sign off. So if you guys have got three good questions you guys want to ask, feel free to drop it in the comment section. Appreciate you guys for watching. Everybody tuning in, asking, interacting in the chat. We got a bunch of people in here interacting, so okay, okay. Speaking of but speaking of people that we hated, I used to hate uh Wade Barrett too. Mm. The whole Nexus thing that, that I used to I, I used to be like, ah, I hate them so much. It was dangerous. It was dangerous. I like the next seeing punk join. You never knew when it was going uh, when it was going to pop up. Uh, yeah. How much have you learned from X and uh, Byron Jones? Lewis wants to know. Um, I learned a lot from them. Honestly, I can say like they taught me how to be a pro. Like obviously, when you get into the NFL, you think you're a pro because you made it, but they it's really humbling experiences. So like they taught me how to like I said how to be a pro, which means how to take proper notes, how to dissect the film and and watch it not only like oh like what route is he running more like what down is it why is he running this route the timing um what's his favorite route on third down versus what's his favorite route on first down Do, does he even run around on first down so a lot of little things like that uh you know they they help my game so much and you know practicing with them you know they hold they hold everything at high standards so you know, you watch you guys watch them play, and like I said, everything they do is, is a high standard, and they, they just make you great. So, like, if, if you're going to be around them, you got to put your best effort first because they'll tell you, like, like listen, like you're not you're not really doing what you're supposed to do. So, we need you to step it up. So, so who would you? I look uh, at them more like big brothers. Growing up, uh, who was your favorite player growing up? Maybe somebody that uh, you idolized growing up, favorite player you wanted to be like. So, so growing up, my favorite player was Cam Newton. Cam, like Cam was Cam was the man back then for me. Um, I did the whole Superman thing. Um, even when he was in even when he was in Auburn, like he was my favorite player. And it's funny because when we played them this year, when we played them last year, uh, when he was with Carolina, yeah. I went up to him after the game. This is the first time I ever like fangirled or anything over it, like yeah. anybody. And I seen it, I was like, I was like, yo, that's Cam Newton. Like, <laughs> I used to watch him when I was a kid. Like, I used to wear number two, had the cleats, and I finally like see him in front of me playing in 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 his in the whole Carolina uniform. And I was like, wow, like, this is crazy. And then I went up to him after the game. Oh, we talked a little bit, and I told him I was like, listen, like. I don't want to sound. I don't want to sound like a fan or nothing, but you be my favorite player since I was a kid. So I just want to tell you that. And he started laughing, and he was like, nah, "I appreciate that." 
Yeah, my my I mean, my favorite player of all time was Tom Brady though. So watching growing up, Tom Brady was like, like my guy, bro. Brady, and then my other two would be Ocho Cinco and Terrell Owens. Those are my yeah. two. I probably had to throw in uh, I probably had to throw in uh, Ladani and Thomason too. LT, yeah, he big yeah, down he, here. Yeah, he's the truth. <clears throat> Not Alexander's big down here too because he's from where I'm from. So I met, yeah. I met him when I was in the, when I was in the third grade. And he came to our school and signed autographs, took pictures, and everything because I went to the same elementary school that he went to. So he was pretty. This is back when in his prime too, though, like when he was popping, like one of the best running backs in the yeah. league. So uh, that would definitely be <clears throat> that, that would definitely be up there. What about right now? I mean, you in the league right now? Who's some of your favorite players that you love to watch right now? You're like, man. Um, definitely uh, Odell, um, Jalen Ramsey, Jamal Adams. Tyron Matthew, um, and it's crazy because all these guys that I'm saying, I used to like even coming up in high school. I used to watch their highlight tape while I'm in class. Like I was supposed to be taking notes, and I'm like, got my laptop open watching all the highlight yeah. tapes. Um, but yeah, those are those are like my like currently like when I came into the league, like I like watch a lot of their film, um, and it, it still doesn't feel real like. Being able to be like, dang, I used to watch, I used to like watch these people play when I was in school, like on my laptop. Yeah. And watch how like take before a game or something. Like, I used to, I used to always watch the more I like take before I played the game. Like it just, it got going. So knowing I mean, that, I'm Brady's in the league. It's crazy. I gotta throw Brady in there because he's still in the league. But as far as Brady, listen, bro, Jamar Chase, man. Hey, he uh, he's tough. Man. Jamar Chase is tough. Yeah, he up there for me. Especially playing for the Bengals, yeah, he up there for me. Uh, I would say Jamar Chase. I do rock with Jamar Chase a lot, so I definitely will throw him in there. Uh, I do like Aaron Donald. Oh, I love watching him play. Aaron Donald's a monster, yeah. so he definitely up there. Uh, I'm actually even, even Jamar on my team. Jamar Harlan, he yeah, he's one hell of a player. Yeah, uh, even like being around him in the building and seeing what how he you know you know everybody has different like rituals and and things they get themselves prepared for a game and. He's one of those people that, like, he takes that stuff very seriously. So. All right, last uh, football question for me. Who, uh, since you've been playing, toughest player you've ever had to guard? Could be high school, college, anybody. Anybody you can think of. Toughest player I, had, I ever had to guard was uh, Hunter Winfro. He plays for uh, – right now he plays for uh, the Raiders. Mm-hmm. He, uh, when I played him, he, he was coming off of – like the best season he had had. He had got a, a scholarship. And I'm a freshman at this point. And I'm, this is my first game, like, starting in the slot. Against him, I used to, I was playing corner. And then they put me on him in the slot. And I'm like, I wasn't, I wouldn't say nervous. I was like, man, like. He really he good. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> I'm a freshman. Like, I'm like, yeah. and then when I went out there, I think I think that right there solidified that I feel like I could play with anybody because me being that young and, and guarding him, he had zero catches against me. And I had oh. to pick that game. So that that's where I was like Charles Lawrence was the quarterback at that time. Was that your was, like, was that your first uh was that your first feeling that you really felt like you could make it to the league? Like I could really probably make it to the league. Um I like I always had that feeling no matter what, but that game right there for me really solidify like okay like I could like I said I could play with anybody like just because I went to Syracuse like I could play against all like the top teams like you throw Clemson and I could play I could compete with them. Uh even if we had to play Bama I could compete with them like so that's how I felt. All right so this one right here uh, much love to Triple H what are your top three Triple H matches? So I'll I'll start with mine. So definitely me I already talked about the Triple H Undertaker match WrestleMania twenty eight that's definitely up there it's my number one. I would probably say Triple H and Cactus Jack at the Royal Rumble, that street fight that they had. Mm-hmm. And my third one, I might say Triple H and Shawn Michaels at uh, SummerSlam in 02 when Shawn Michaels came I was back. I would say that one too. I yeah, that one. definitely that one for sure. I, that one for me, I was like, when I watched it, I was like, well, like this is crazy. Like, yeah. <laughs> the Hell in the Cell. Um, would have the, the ladder match. Like, what, what other match they had? 
Which one are you talking about? Sean, uh, Sean Michaels? Sean, they had the, the, the three matches in one night. Uh, the three, three stages of hell, yeah. Three stages of hell yeah. That was pretty sick. Yeah, that, that was that's my favorite one. Um, uh, him versus Undertaker. And him him versus Edge and Jeff Hardy. In, uh, in that match. Yeah. Even though he loves it, I don't care. It's a good question right here. Uh, um, he wants to know, would you ever wrestle after your football career? Or maybe even, you know, yeah, they always do celebrity matches, so. Let's let's just say you know something's gonna be in the works soon. Oh, for real? Yeah, wrestling before before football wrestling was something I told myself I was gonna do. Like I was like, I want to be wrestling. I grew up. I want to be wrestling. So you actually you want to actually like be like a WWE superstar? Or you just want to like? Get oh yeah, I want to be a, a superstar. I don't want to just pop up. I want to. So you I actually want to be a wrestler? Yeah. Oh, if so you ask any of my friends, if you ask any of my like, if I was to call any of my friends from when I was a kid, and I'll be like, "Yo, randomly, like, yo, what did I want to be when I wanted to grow up?" They'll be like a wrestler. So was wrestler was it always wrestler and football, or just like football and wrestler, or was it kind of both? It honestly, it was always wrestling and baseball at first. Oh, baseball. Okay. Good, yeah, I was a good baseball player. I honestly thought I was gonna go go playing baseball before football. Baseball was the first sport I, I ever played. Uh, what well, well, what made you transition over to, to football for baseball? Um, base, baseball wasn't as much aggressive like as uh, like as like football, aggressive. obviously. Yeah, and like once I played football, once I played football, and I used to, like was tackling and doing all that stuff, I just couldn't stop. Like it was like you get that adrenaline. See, there, there are two types of people in the world. People watching. There are people like him, and there are people like me. See, I I I, I don't like physicality. I don't like being hit. I don't like being like none of that stuff. That's why. That's why I don't. I never had desire to be a wrestler because like I got a very low pain threshold. So it's like, all right. And I've, I've been in the ring before, and I've taken bumps in the ring. And now, like when I took my first bump, I was like, yep, no way. Like there's no way I could ever. Maybe there's no way I could ever be a wrestler. Like they do this all the time. Like like this is no way. So for me, it's, it's right. like. But. No, go ahead. You can. And then I said people, and then there are people like him who love physicality. Like some people love the. I used to go to school with a friend of mine. Um, he used to just, he just loved, he loved being physical. I don't even know why. Like he just loved hitting people. He loved being hit. Like he would get hit, and he's just like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like, like okay, like, see, I don't like, I, I'm not that kind of physical though. <laughs> he, like, he was really into the physicality, like really, like into the like the. I guess like it got his adrenaline pumping more. You know what I mean? Because he he was a he was a yeah. big dude, so he played defensive tackle. So like and like. Being physical was just something like it's like an alpha male thing, I guess. Some people like you know that that alpha male yeah. instinct, you know what I mean? So, um, but so were you think were you better in baseball than football? Or oh yeah, I was way I was way better at baseball. I, I have I was a switch hitter. Really? Uh, I played shortstop, center field, left field. So you took a chance uh, in football. You just took a chance. Yeah, yeah. I went to the Little League World Series. I was I was really good at baseball. Like I said, if. If you give me like two months to train again for baseball, I could make, I could make a, I think I could make a, a MLB team. Really? Yeah, I just need two months, two months of just straight baseball training, and I'll be, I'll be back to what I used to be. So you but said back the, to uh, wrestling. Right. I'll be, I'll definitely be a heel. I wouldn't be a good guy. <laughs> want to be a heel? So you want to go for the full tryout though, like full blown tryout? Like I want to be a whole yeah. sign and everything. Yeah. That's what's up, man. That's what's up, man. Follow the dreams. I mean, you shit. You already made it to the NFL, so I mean, what, what's who say you can't make it there either? So, yeah, there's not a lot of people make it to the league either. So, I mean, that's on my bucket, yeah, one percent. But that's on my bucket list to to be a wrestler. Hey, what I'm saying, and if you it, look, it could part, be ten, 10 years, ten years later, I'd be, I'd be what, thirty in my thirties. Well, I'm just saying, if you if you get there, you need a, you need a manager, bro. Saying, come holler at me. Come holler at me. I can, I can do a manager. Be my, uh, my Paul Heyman. I can, I can do the manager role. I can do the manager role. I know about <laughs> the physicality stuff, but I can do the manager role. We can, we can get into that one. We can get into the manager role. But I, mean, I feel like, and you know, WWE, they, they like athletes like you too. Football players like athletes, you know, yeah. like we're athletes. So you got natural athletic ability. So, you know, it's it'll be tough, though. I know a lot of the transition. I, know, I feel like the transition would definitely be. I wouldn't want. I don't want to say easy because nothing's easy, but it would definitely be a challenge. And I, you know, I, 
I like I've heard football players. Like, I've heard uh, football players, like people, former football players, like who've been in NFL and everything. Yeah. I've, heard, I've heard people say like the WWE training was like way harder than the. Than the I heard it was more like, intense. It was more intense. Yeah. Because it's like, it's just so much. Like, I think it's for because people don't expect to go through what they go through. You know what I mean? Like people maybe expect yeah. something different, but it's like they put you through a lot. You know what I mean? So it's it's definitely. Yeah. It's definitely something out there, but I mean, if you get there, bro, conditioning. Yeah, you're gonna definitely have good conditioning, bro. So if you get there, for sure, man. All right, we'll go ahead and sign off though. Uh, you can plug in if you want. Plug in your social medias if you want to. Plug in your stuff. You can tell uh, okay, uh, my Instagram is Trill Williams. It's just Trill Williams. You'll find me on there. Um, Twitter, Trill Williams Six. TikTok is also Trill Williams Six. So if you guys wanna, you know. Look at my stuff and interact with me. Ask, ask even ask you questions, wrestling questions. You know, I, I'll answer. So appreciate you having me. Let me see. You gotta find this real quick so we can sign off with this. <clears throat> I gotta find. I gotta scroll up and find it though. It, it, it'll go with the with the send off, but I just gotta find where the damn where the damn thing was. There it is. So my guy Lou, I thought you a big Dolphins fan, so. Sign off. <clears throat> what what do you, what do you think uh, the expectations are for y'all this season? What do y'all think y'all can do? Y'all was, I mean, you said he was one game away from the playoffs last year. So this year you got one, one game away to, uh, last year. Like I said, this year, you know, we got the new coaching staff. And so far, you know, being around them, I I, I really like them. They're pretty cool. Um, even even the vibe around the facility, like even like being around my teammates now versus last year when, you know, when we started losing, like it wasn't, you know, like, it wasn't really a good vibe, but nobody likes to lose. But now we feel like, like this year is our year. Like this year, we're gonna come together and you know, we'll take one game at a time, one play at a time, one workout at a time, one practice at a time, and it's all gonna make sense. You know, when the season comes around, because we started, we started OTAs very early before almost, almost before every other team. Right. So we're trying to build that bond now. So by the time the season rolls around, already had that connection. Like, instead of this being like, oh, this is like the first year that they have this coach and we're all together, it's going to feel like we all been together. This is like our third year being together. So right. that's our expectations right there. Well, there you have it. So expect a lot from the Dolphins this year, bro. But uh, appreciate you for taking the time out today to come on, man. Good chatting. Uh, no problem, man. <laughs> Anytime. More than welcome to come back on anytime you want, man. Whenever you got time, whenever you want to come back on, man. More than welcome to come back on. I put you on some other content creators. Uh, you follow me, but I'm sure you follow other people too. But uh, you know, I, I got a, a collaboration with a lot of content creators. If you want to see more content creators, you can do wrestling. So make sure you guys give my guy a follow right here. And thank you guys for watching and uh, stay in tune. And definitely got more uh, more stuff coming up for you guys on my YouTube and Twitch too. So thank you guys for coming through.